Welcome back to the Rent Roll Startup Podcast. I'm Ellen Bathgate, and in today's episode, we are diving into a really brilliant interview with a really brilliant rent roll owner, Amanda Turner from Opulence Property in Queensland. Now, I've known Amanda since pretty much the day she started her rent roll when she joined our rent roll growth training program marketing school, and she has just come along in leaps and bounds. What she is doing in her marketplace is quite incredible. So in today's discussion, we're going to be talking all things property management fees. And Amanda has really turned property management fees on their head. She has found a way of offering a really different fee structure to her marketplace. And it certainly worked out really well for her landlords and incredibly well for the profitability of her rent roll as well. So I think you're going to enjoy this interview. We're talking all things property management fees, but also you'll get to meet a special member of her team as well. If you're listening on audio, you won't get to see this little character who forms part of the opulence property family but if you're watching on video i think you'll enjoy this part of the interview so let's jump into the interview with amanda turner now welcome amanda to today's podcast i'm so excited that you're joining us here amanda turner is the founder of opulence property queensland and she's going to share some very cool uh things about her business fee structure and how she achieves the fees that she achieves. But before we jump into the podcast, if people follow you on social media, they might they might know that you have a new member of your family and it's a little black pug named Basil. And if you are listening to this podcast, you won't be able to see her. But if you are watching the video, you will be able to see her Um chewing on your fingers right now. So <laughs> can you tell us a little bit about Basil, your new family member, and also about Bika, who is your other pug, and how she is adjusting to the new family member? Oh, she's not adjusting very well at all. So Bika is my Aboriginal pug. She's their pugaliers, so they've got their cross. They're a bit tired. Um, they're crossed with um, cavaliers. Uh, so Basil is a pure black cav- um, pugalier from Aratula in Queen Southern Downs. So or technically a scenic room near Warwick. So um, that's my second baby. She's nine weeks old. She's a bit sleepy at the moment. Um, Beaker is five years old. She's also from Aratula, same breeder. Uh, she's a fawn pug. She's five years old and she's been an only child until about a week ago. So she's not adjusting very well. She's not in the room. <laughs> she's out in the lounge room. <laughs> but um, a little one here sleeps next to me all the time. So oh. she's pretty happy to be featured today. She's very, very cute. And I know that although your social media feed is beautifully polished and very on brand, every now and then in the stories, we will see Beaker make a small appearance. And I'm hopeful that very soon we'll get to see Basil make an appearance. Absolutely. Because she is. Great little team members. (laughs) Just beautiful. Just beautiful. Um, So. Can I get you to tell me a little bit about how you started your business, Opulence Property Queensland, the origin story of it? The origin story, um, it was probably a fork in the road, which I think a lot of people get to before starting a business. Sometimes it's just one of those things where you just technically, they say, you know, jump two feet in and I jumped two feet in off a cliff <laughs> is what it felt like. Um, I started on my own um basically an old laptop so um it was definitely one that only lasted six months into my business that's how old it was um i also took on an experienced business advisor um, who has nothing to do with the industry so they were able to help me without any bias to the current industry and where it was going they just made sure that they were i had them at the back making sure that we had a one year two year three and five year plan to make sure that if we're going to go and do it it's going to be sustainable um, and once basically, you know, licensing and everything hit, it was ground running. I had my software up and running. I signed up with you um, and started calling everyone I knew for a coffee that was in the industry, adjacent to the industry, and someone, they, um, friends and family who I knew were investors as well, um, and just got addicted to coffee in the first six months, three or four coffees a day. But, you know, that was the investment that I had. Not everyone starts 
you know, with huge money behind them. And, you know, I'm very honest with that. Like we didn't start with major budgets. We started just with a focus. And I knew that six months I could afford five coffees a month, absolutely, to talk to anyone. And social media was basically the origins of Opulence Property, starting from zero management. And so Opulence Property is a little bit different to your mainstream real estate agency because you offer property management, but you also offer a buyer's advocacy service too. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's That was huge last year. Um, this year as well, we've been busy with the buyer's agency. So that started probably um, a couple of years before I went into business. I was contacted a lot by people about my thoughts um, and research on investments uh, and also agriculture um, purchases. So I had a lot of people from my background is agriculture um, going up. So a lot of people from in a different state that I know from um, contacted me about looking at property in Queensland who uh, are just horses and cattle on. And then um, obviously investors knew I was, you know, long-term in, in as a property manager. So they were trying to get my idea on, on a few things and then realised I can do this for a job. <laughs> so I incorporated that service uh, into a business as well. So when, as an observer on the outside, I think that's what, makes you quite unique. Um, what do you think makes Opulence Property Queensland so unique? I think because we are invested from the point of a buyer's agency. So a lot of our um, managements are from the point of buyer's agency. So we're there from the inception of a purchase. Um, we get to see the behind the scenes with that investor, that plan. We do work heavily with financial planners and accountants for these investors. And we understand what that plan is from purchase to end an exit strategy. So that plays a huge role in how we go about um, leasing, leasing terms, the type of tenant, the longevity of a tenant, the rent we achieve. Not everyone wants the highest rent. Um, understanding when to look at getting capital works done during, during you know, some people are five years, some people are 10. You know, when do we do the renovation? When do we do the re-roof? When do we um, change the bathroom, all those different things, whilst then returning it back to a tenancy and capturing, you know, depreciation schedules and um, making sure that the financial financials are adding up and, we're, and we've got everything uh, captured each financial year as that plan heads in. Not everyone's that sophisticated, um, but the majority of our clients are. And, you know, that takes a whole different level into how we provide that service. Um, additionally, that comes with being very focused on our clients and, to keep our clients, you know, uh, wealth creation growing, we need consistency and tenancy. That's, you know, obviously the foundation. So we need that tenant experience to be high standard as well. Wow. And it sounds to me like you are attracting the type of clients that most of us as property managers would want to work with, people who are strategic about their investment before they even buy it and then who understand that capital works are going to be needed, as you said, five years, 10 years from now and mm -hmm. actually planning for that. Yeah, it's not, it's not like um, you have to have a project planning you know, concept. It's just understanding the process with your trades and understanding how long that'll take and how far out you have to plan that. So if we know we've got um, like a lease renewal coming up in six to three to six months' time, we need to start getting quotes, booking in trades because we have to un you know, ask that tenant to leave um, or you know, they may leave on their own accord um, and plan and actually planning vacancy and contingency for that client to have no income, but also expending money during that vacant time. Yeah. Wow. So one of the reasons I wanted to sit down and talk to you is because I know that your fee structure is unique. Um, and I think that by unique, I mean higher than probably most of your competitors. And I'd love it if you'd be happy to give us a breakdown around what your fee structure is like. You don't need to share specifics, um, but how that compares in your marketplace. So our structure um, is what we refer to as our subscription opulence, opulence, sorry, opulence property management subscription. So we likened it to be, I guess, how financial planners and accountants go about their fees as well, because what I was finding just like I mentioned, like we're project managing during vacant periods, natural disasters. Um, we've got, you know, owners wanting to do the project works. And during that time, we have to be involved in that, but we don't necessarily earn money on it. So it's a 52 week a year role. So why would we have no, I guess, fees 
on certain weeks that they're vacant. So we, we revisited that idea along with the demand from clients that are, you know, strategic and need to understand, you know, what value they're getting versus the output of money. Um, and that basically came into a modernised version of, well, what does it take to manage a property a year? How many hours are we actually putting into a property per year on a, on a good year? Like we're not taking into account natural disasters or anything. Um, but that means on those years it's higher. Um, and it has been for many property managers, as you know, in, you know, on the East Coast, um, it's been quite a hard year. And some of these structures are, you know, we will take management fees when we're receiving rent. And a lot of these properties aren't receiving rent and property managers still have a, a service to uphold. So I guess um, how it compares in our market from a concept point of view, we can't say that we compare to anyone and that's on purpose. It's not to say I want to go against the grain and do something that's completely different and from an ego point of view of being different. It's actually from the point of benefiting our client and our business structure so that we are making sure that we're upholding our service and being remunerated for it as everyone in business is you know, allowed to go and do. You have to earn your money while doing something you're good at and we have proven that over the last three years and with that concept that we have produced to the public, when we first came to market, we were offering both what I refer to as traditional as the percentage um, plus the event fees. And then we refer to our fee as just a more modernised. So for the sake of this conversation, as opposed to traditional and modernised, we found within the first six months of offering both, 95% of people were, percent of people were taking up the modernised version because they knew exactly what their output was for their annual fee, as opposed to the traditional where it, it's, a, it's a little bit skewed depending on you know time of month, what time of part of the tenancy. And a lot of people just want certainty, clarity, transparency, end to end, know what they're going to get. So we've actually completely dropped the offering of um, traditional um, from, from that because obviously it was a market test. Within six months, we didn't need it. No one was interested in that concept um, because in what is an unstable world in our economy now, transparency and stability is forefront even um you know today with interest rates going up i'm still having clients going we just need to know what we're paying and what we're getting for that service wow that's incredible so i was going to ask you if you get a lot of pushback on your fees it sounded yeah. like you don't <laughs> we we don't i guess um as as you know like when you when you're focusing on a on a target client you will attract a target client more so than the one that isn't a target client. So we do get, don't, do not get me wrong, we don't win everything and I think that's fine. Like I don't think every business would win win every um, client they came across. But at the same time, we're also selecting our clients. So I've also declined quietly, <laughs> declined clients because they're not in line with how we um, would like to run our service. They want our service, but they want it their way. And by all means, we are bespoke and, and boutique in how we go about our offerings. But if they're more like just, you know, we want this rent, we're not really keen on doing any maintenance, um, you know, we want high rent, we want growth, but they're not going to be putting the time it takes to do that, then we're not in alignment. And it's a dis disturb disservice to that particular client as well. And there is, that's not to say that's wrong. That is a strategy. Some people just like to sit and wait. And there are definitely um, agencies who do that. Again, it's not right or wrong. It's just not our way. and um, once we go into the conversation, majority of the time, I say 95 to 98 percent of the time, the pushback initially is more a, a query into our differences to how our retainer version, I guess you could call it as a subscription service, an annual fee, benefits a client over a traditional method of fees. Um, and like anything new that you're bringing to the market, whether it be yourself, a brand or your structure, um, we just basically go in with that education and value that versus cost and you know, that the, the education behind what it takes to actually manage your property correctly and efficiently. Wow, that, that's just incredible. And I, I gather that because you're so often dealing with the property investor, even before they've purchased the property, you're able to consider like total annual rental yield, which also then factors in your subscription based mm -hmm. service of fee structure yeah absolutely so when we're assessing properties for investors specifically um we do look at 
what the current rental gain would be, like income per year would be. And we also then look at what would increase it on the type of property. So before we even go and look at making an offer, we're considering this property for the next 10 years and we look at short-term, medium-term, long-term maintenance um, and costs of rates, stamp duty, property management costs and um, obviously contingency for the fact of, of vacancy. And we can't predict everything, but yeah, absolutely. We're taking into account that a professional service of managing an asset uh, is an investment in itself and has to be considered as a part of the cost for the 10-year plan. Yeah, wow. So in terms of profitability for your business, certainly when I was growing a rent roll, I offered a fairly traditional management fee structure that is commission-based, that is completely reliant on there being occupancy in the property in order to be paid. What impact does this have on your business's profitability? Huge impact. So, you know, from, I guess, from the point of view of uh, number of properties versus profit, um, we, we are happily uh, what you'd call a micro boutique agency. And that is on purpose. And there's nothing that we're doing that is by accident. Um, and what that does mean is those clients get, more of my time, more of the PM's time. And all clients do speak with me, we do have a team, but we're not overrun by the constant bits and pieces and focusing on each client and knowing them specifically, as I mentioned, like with the plan, like no one picks up a phone or calls that email, uh, emails that owner to say anything without understanding, this is the type of owner we're talking to and this is the plan. So yes, we're going to have to call someone out to do plumbing, but we know that they're maintenance conscious. So the conversation is, hey, I know that um, we had a we had a something break down. Let's get everything checked so that that's going to save us a call out potentially for six to twelve months, rather than getting them out for smaller things. So it's we know our client and what conversation they want us to come with as a solution. That is profitable because then we're spending less time calling an owner constantly for maintenance and working on our business and in making sure our reviews are done on on lease renewals and retaining um, retaining clients, retaining tenants growing business. The the retainer concept also allows us to put energy into servicing the client. As you know, with tradition with traditional, like you've got to go through and double check all your fees are charged in your software and a software is growing. It is amazing. I, I personally use Property Tree and I've seen huge advance advancements since console. I think we all had a console back in our career when we first started this sort of 10, 15 years ago. And there would be time to come to financial year as a property manager in your own portfolio and go, oh my goodness, I've just done this audit and we've accidentally missed a few things. Human error, of course, as, as we know happens. But then, you know, you've got people going back to make sure they charge it and then you have client dissatisfaction that you didn't charge it when you were meant to. And hopefully you can at least capture it in the correct financial year. So there's a lot of time put in effort into that. And as a micro boutique agency, we don't want to be spending that time making sure our fees are charged. Um, rightfully but you know it's time spent making sure the, the cracks aren't getting bigger is eliminated by re just presenting a yearly fee and we're focusing more on our job and not our fees so therefore our attention's in the correct area of what we're meant to be doing gosh i love that that's incredible so is there like a script or a phrase or something that you use to overcome objections or to justify this fee structure when you're talking with prospective landlords? I think it would probably be, and I, I'm pretty sure I was told, one of the most annoying, even in my career, BDMs or sort of pitches because I don't take anything with me and never have to uh, clients. Mm -hmm. I just take myself and a business card. Uh, and I try not to be too scripted, but we focus on a message. And um, as you mentioned, like our brand is very transparent. It's on purpose. It's clear and concise in the way that we want transparency, education and wealth creation for our clients. So as much as every client has a different outcome, um, we basically making we're basically making sure that they understand our transparency is key and we want to ensure whilst we are, I guess, working towards their wealth, we have to be sustainable as well because our legislation is changing, the world is changing. You know, the tenants' um, rights obligations are changing, which puts more pressure on our clients' rights and obligations. And we're that middle person to make sure no one 
is missing out or doing the incorrect thing unintentionally. Um, but, you know, that means more training, um, more experience needed. And with more experienced PMs in your team comes, you know, I have to pay a high fee for my staff and I want to. I definitely think that probably managers with experience, interest and passion in their industry are worth their weight in gold. And that makes a difference between someone, you know, talking to someone who's essentially taking um, messages as an admin role to a property manager sitting in that seat and essentially advising on your property in, I guess, the the purpose of its wealth creation growth. A, a decision now on attending a property for plumbing and then not thinking about the big picture of getting things done, for example, at that time, over three months could see $500, $600 of constant callback. And that is detrimental to the big picture. So that comes with experience. But I guess from a, a phrase point of view, it's having the client really understand what it takes to efficiently manage an asset that is going to grow and create that wealth. And it's a 52 week a year role. It's not something that stops just because it's, it's vacant. If anything, that's when property managers work harder. And I want to make sure that we're focused on the outcome and not just simply putting any tenant in there to make sure we get our permission. Wow, I love that. And as an investor, when you're saying that to an investor, I would imagine that really makes them think. Because so often I think we take it for granted that, you know, the property manager will just do their job even though the property's vacant for a period of time. The property manager will, you know, just still do the right thing and find the perfect tenant. But really our traditional fee structure incentivizes occupancy at all cost or at any cost in lots of ways. Whereas if you have a subscription style fee structure, you as a property manager or as a property management agency are being paid no matter what. So you actually can focus on getting the best outcome for the landlord, not just getting occupancy so that you can start getting your fee again. Exactly. And it's not to say that that is how property managers on the traditional fee work. I definitely don't want to be coming in saying that traditional is wrong and I'm right. It's, it's, it's horses for courses and it does suit investment plans to be on a traditional structure. And it is just one of those things where it's mindful. My clients, I don't want that conversation saying, are they pushing this type of rent, this level of rent or this type of applicant, for example, because they just want to make their commission because it's been vacant for 30 days. As you know, trends will occur. And right now as a property manager, it's not something that's coming across my table that we're waiting for vacancies, but it will occur. It will come back. And we want to make sure that we will sustain our business and service standards during that time for our client because it is stressful for our client. And we're not, we don't want to pass on that stress to them. We want to keep making sure our level remains as it is now in a, in a market that's beneficial to the client and in a market where it becomes a bit, a bit harder. Yeah. Wow. You've certainly given, you've given me a, an awful lot to think about a, in relation to how we charge our fees. And I would imagine you're, you're giving our listeners a huge amount to think about, uh, even if they stay on a traditional fee structure, just to reassess how they yes, charge absolutely. It. Yeah, It did start, it really did start. I started traditional, absolutely. Um, our first year was traditional. And then at year sort of 18 months, that's when we dropped our traditional. The I think it comes down to when, when we're pitching as well as property managers, uh, as I've mentioned to you numerous times, it's our worth that we are pitching for. And I think we broke it down on our own case study. It's 45 hours per property per year on a good year for a property manager to look after a property that includes one new tenancy end to end for a 12 month, for example, you know, an entry condition report right through to an exit without arguing for bond. And is is your experience as a property manager worth $100 per hour or 50? Yeah. And that's where it comes down to is working out that worth. And when you know that worth, and, you, and I think it's a really great exercise that I went through with our advisory team, that really is what gets me through a script and pitching our services is really understanding the product and service you as a PM provide. Um, and that can help you get over the, I guess, the rejection. Don't get me wrong. I, like I said, I definitely don't win everyone. And sometimes you feel like, Oh, if I did something probably a little bit different, I'd probably have more properties by now. But it's a dilution of what you're doing. And in the end, we work very hard a lot of the time of the year. And you want to make sure you're doing it for clients that you want to work with and choose selectively based on that. 
And traditionally, we did set out fees that were very intricate. So as you know, uh, in, well, as many know, in Queensland specifically, on a traditional um, property agreement with your client, you have to mention every single charge that you want to charge. You can't just suddenly bring in a charge to cover a cost that comes in every now and then that's not maintenance. So we were quite intricate and all of these fees and on a schedule that looks like a lot. That is huge. So we, I think we had 18 fees mentioned, not that they would be charged, but that there was a probability that if we needed to, it was there. So some of, I guess, a justification to our fees are, well, do you know how much you actually spent on management fees and commissions last year for your current management team over the course of a normal tenancy life cycle? I haven't had any client that's signed on who's been able to actually break that down and go, well, yearly I pay this because it's all up and down naturally as it's an event-based um, structure. Suits so some people. Like I said, it's definitely not me sitting here saying I'm correct or they're wrong, but it's an interesting conversation to have with clients that I, in that sophisticated mindset of, I need to know what I have output per year per property in all aspects, not just maintenance and stamp duty and depreciation but also now management because that's an investment within the event in, within the investment wow you've like you've certainly changed the way i look at at the way we offer service and how much time it takes to provide that service and then how we charge for that service as well and i i think there are probably a lot of people who have cogs in their brains turning now as they're listening to this thinking. i hope so property managers are worth it in their way like they you know we're obviously mindful of winning business but you know it shouldn't be at a cost where you know property management is so worth that investment and i hope you know as time goes on with legislation changes property managers do push that wealth creation aspect is also them being a part of that to assist that client and that's worth it yeah, absolutely. So I know that our listeners are going to be curious about where they can find you on social media because they go, they're going to be curious and they're going to want to have a sticky beak at <laughs> what you are up to. Amanda, if we were, we will probably link uh, to all your socials in the podcast notes or if you're watching it on video above or below the video as well. But can you tell us quickly where we could find you on social media so people can uh, learn a little bit more about you and Opulence Property Queensland and then occasionally in the stories get to see mm -hmm. Beaker and Basil the Puggleers? Um, uh, yes, all basically the normal social media. So I'm quite a traditionalist. It's Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, um, and particularly the uh, Instagram is where you'll see Basil and Beaker. They're our um, happy team members making sure our happiness levels stay stay high so they they're featured probably weekly at this point <laughs> that's awesome so we i'll make sure that i pop your facebook instagram and linkedin handles in the show notes or above or below the video wherever you are watching this thank you so much for sharing uh this side of your business amanda that perhaps doesn't get spoken about so widely in our industry um, but I think it's really shedding some light on how we can look at property management businesses really differently and offer some options to our clients if that feels like the right thing for our business. Absolutely. I hope it helps. It's definitely yeah. not a right or wrong course. I think it's going to always be based around your target audience. Yeah, yeah, I love that. So thank you so much for being here, Amanda. I can't wait um, to see how you continue to grow. Thank you. It's been good. Thank you for chatting with me. So what did you think of that interview with Amanda Turner? Isn't she doing some amazing stuff with her property management fees? Now, if you want to go and check out what she's doing, make sure that you either click the show notes if you're listening to this on audio on a podcast platform or if you're watching on video, make sure you check above or below this video so that you can go and connect with her on all of her socials and you can see what incredible things she's doing in her marketplace as she grows her rent roll as well.